Okay, I think it is uh, almost time. Uh, Dave, you're here, right? I think I've seen you in the in the call already. Yep, I'm here. Great. Um, I was sure to introduce yourself, but of course, uh, after that, uh, the floor is all yours. Um, as a second session, we have Dave Ruiter. And Dave is actually one of my colleagues. Uh, Dave is also an MVP, a data platform MVP, uh, and a blogs on his own website, uh, moderndata.ai. Um, besides that, you might also know him from the Power BI cheat sheet, uh, where he uh, uh, that was shared uh, all over the internet already. Um, actually, we should uh, update it again. But uh, that's a different yeah. topic. Um, he's a public speaker and consultant and creator of Power BI Cheat Sheet. And besides that, uh, uh, as well as I, uh, I do working uh, at McCall. Um, so, Dave, the, the floor is all yours. So you can start sharing your uh, presentation and, of course, uh, further introduce yourself. All right. I'll share my screen. Thanks for the introduction. Um, uh, pick the right screen. Share. Yep, right. I can see it now. You can see it. Great. I still have the presenter um, window. Um, yeah, maybe click hide as well on the little bar in the in the bottom where I can see that you're sharing your screen. That one right. indeed. Yeah, thanks. And I would like to see the chat as well. Let me reorganize my windows. I need a third monitor. <laughs> that's, uh, that's OK. All right. So. Um, as uh, Nikki said before, um, please uh, use the raise uh, hand functionality if you have a question. And uh, I'll try to keep an eye on that. And otherwise, uh, Mark will jump in and, um, um, and uh, notify me. Um, and then I, I'll just pause whenever I think it's the right moment. And then you can unmute if you want. And otherwise, uh, Mark or I will just read, the, read your question from the chat and uh, we'll answer it. Um, I've got a lot to, to, to talk about. Um, uh, it's all about Power BI Premium. Um, and um, if you have any questions, yeah, ju just interrupt me because uh, it might be the exact right moment to, uh, to talk about that before, uh, before continuing on on other subjects. Um, yeah, let's go ahead. So uh, thanks, uh, Mark, for introducing me. Uh, a couple of... Uh, yeah, ways to, to contact me via email, Twitter, LinkedIn, or my blog. Um, yeah, we created the, the cheat sheet. Here's the link. So maybe, Mark, you can post it in the chat as well. Oh, did you do that already? I think you did it. OK, great. Um, what is Power BI Premium? Well, I always say it's, it's three things. Um, it's dedicated resources in the cloud. I'll explain in detail what that means. Um, and uh, secondly, you get a bunch of awesome features, primarily enterprise-focused features. And um, um, my experience, yeah, from, from mid-size companies and, and above, they, they, uh, they will need or want those features. And um, uh, one other big reason to purchase Power BI Premium is the, the large-scale distribution that you get. Um, and if you use that, um, the viewers of your report don't need a Power BI Pro license individually anymore. Um, important to say for the last part is that it's only applicable if you use Power BI Premium P. So the P SKU, the SQ. Um, SKU is a software mm, unit. Um, uh, so we can say license or version. Um, so remember, premium P and A gives you the top features, and only premium P will give you the large scale distribution. And um, we'll, we'll cover the versions and the differences uh, later on as well. Um, I said you get a whole list of, of, of features, and um, this is a nice list. I don't know if it's complete. If I miss something important, uh, maybe uh, Nick or Nikki or Mark or somebody else, drop it in the chat. Um, 
I said you can share with free users, so that's that's great. Um, you can get 48 times a daily refresh instead of the usual eight. Um, this will be lifted, this limitation by Microsoft, but they uh, haven't done that as far as I know. So it's 48 times. Um, then uh, you, you also can have larger data sets. So your data models can be um, quite large. And a really um, uh, yeah, powerful feature is the XMLA endpoint. So the, the XMLA, um, it stands for XML for analysis. It has been here for, for years already. It was also a protocol to talk to um, SQL Server analysis services and Azure analysis services. And right now you can use it to talk to uh, your Power BI data models. And that opens up um, uh, yeah, a great set of, of capabilities. You can connect to your models with different tools like SQL Server Management Studio or even Tableau, and um, you can edit your models. So currently, um, there is a preview going on with read and uh, uh, yeah, read and write capabilities. So you can deploy models, uh, tune them, uh, refresh them. Um, any yeah, any enterprise thing that you wanted, it's um, it's available via the XML endpoint. Um, Premium also gives you a couple of other features like. Deployment pipelines, quite new, uh, and, and it's only available for premium. Uh, composite models, paginated reports, uh, multi-geo, and uh, a set of data flow features. So out of the box, data flows is also available for, for pro users. There are uh, features within data flows that, um, that are only available for premium. And how to use it? Um, I like this slide because for for introduction, it's really not really nice. <clears throat> uh, so on the left, you have Power BI Desktop, and in the middle, you have Power BI Pro. They are essential if you if you use Power BI in your uh, um, in your enterprise because Power BI Pro gives you the option to share and, and collaborate, of course. Um, and then um, when you use Power BI Premium, an extra deployment option. Yeah comes available. So um, uh, without premium, you just use Power BI Pro. And then with premium, you get deployment option two. It's important to know that it doesn't replace Power BI Pro. It's, it's an, an add-on, an addition, so an extension. So you will have deployment option one and two available for you side by side. Um, I can explain it a little bit further with this diagram. Um, without premium, uh, it works like this. So uh, company one, the blue, the blue company, uh, imagine that you have three models for sales and a couple of other models. And um, right now, um, the models are in, in like shared capacity. So in the back end, Microsoft has the hardware and not only you, your, your company, your tenant is using that, but also other companies. So it's distributed hardware serving multiple tenants. So the red and black also use this capacity. Um, in the past, Microsoft talked about noisy neighbors and isolating your, your company from others. Yeah, that's, that's, that's nice, but it's um, uh, primarily to get consistent performance, um, um, predictable performance. You know what's going on and you know what's, it will not change from, from one hour to another hour because of other tenants, other clients that might have, uh, uh, might use the same distributed hardware. Microsoft does a really good job of, of managing that hardware. Um, but in the end, it, it is possible that you have a noisy neighbor within the shared capacity. So with Power BI Premium, you move your models or not all of them. You can just decide which models to the dedicated capacity and then um, they um, they run uh, independently of the others. I uh, I also like to uh, call them your your own box um, with um, yeah all the the models that you put in there as like sort of balls or maybe bouncing balls. Um, you got to remember, and we'll talk about that later. Um, it's it's not an infinite size of a box. You pay for 
certain CPU and RAM allocation. And um, if you put too much inside your box, it yeah, all the the balls will start bouncing to each other into the walls, and um, the um, the performance will be even will be actually worse than compared to the performance that they had in the shared capacity because there the the scale is way larger you can you can say it's infinite but um of course it's it's not but uh, you will never reach the, the the outside of the box microsoft will just put more hardware um to it so how do you get it power bi premium um basically there are three large steps first you acquire it um it can be through the microsoft 365 admin portal uh, or in case of the A SKU via the Azure portal. Then you um, configure your capacity and assign workspaces to it. So it's important to know that um, you can leverage Power BI Premium on a workspace level, not on individual um, report level, it's, it's per workspace. And then you distribute your content to the users. If you want to do it with um, the um, capability of having the distribution for to free you know, users, so users without a Power BI Pro license, you will need to share your content through Power BI apps. All right, I totally forgot to look out for any questions, so let's do it right now. Do you get uh, query folding on data flows when using premium? Um, so do you mean um, query folding to the source or from Power BI desktop, from, from data sets to the data flow? So, so when the data flow is the actual source, you can maybe unmute yourself. And if that's um, if that's not possible, um, I don't uh, think that um, query folding is dependent on Power BI Premium. I'm not sure. Mark, do you know the definitive answer? Yeah, yeah, I do know. Uh, there is a difference in uh, query folding, as you said, from data flow to source. There is no dependency on Premium. If you say from data set to data flow, there is one. And because if you enable the enhanced compute engine on data flows, which is a premium feature, uh, the data will be stored in a SQL layer. And then you can inherit uh, uh, query folding between data flow and uh, data set. Right. Okay. And you can even use direct query if you want. Yeah. Thanks for the um, clarification. Um, so there aren't any questions left. Keep keep asking them if you if you have one. Um, uh, so let's go back to the slides. We have uh, uh, how to acquire dedicated capacity. Uh, the Alphas portal. It looks a bit like this. Um, so yeah, amongst all the regular Office services, you also can find Power BI Premium, uh, the EM and the P SKUs right there. It's a monthly or or even yearly. Uh, commitment, and you cannot turn it off uh, from a minute to minute or hour to hour basis. Um, then there's also the A SKU. That's um, technically the same thing in the background. So, uh, but but you you purchase it through the Azure portal, and um, uh, this gives you the the possibility of uh, having. Um, uh, uh, so how do you say how do you say that you you don't have the the commitment the long term commitment so you can turn off your resource and it will not cost any money anymore you pay by the hour if I'm correct and then um, if you turn it if you leave it on twenty four seven it will be um, a little bit more expensive than the P SKU but for cases where you want to try out Power BI Premium or you have a use case where uh, it's only uh, necessary to have premium on on the daily uh, daily basis for like the working hours, maybe 10, 10 hours a day, five hour days a week, then the ASQ might be really cost efficient. <clears throat> so then when you have purchased, purchased it, um, 
uh, you can set a certain um, um, people as capacity admins. <clears throat> it's on a capacity by capacity basis. So you can uh, buy multiple capacities and then you say, okay, Dave, you are the owner, uh, the, the admin of this capacity and Mark, you are the owner of your own capacity. And then there's a, um, a second permission level and um, uh, that's to assign workspaces to capacities. Um, so then you can have certain champions or like pro users that know what they're doing and they um, move workspaces in or out of the capacity without uh, having the other permissions at the capacity level to change uh, all the settings, for instance. For instance. Uh, what does it look like? I'll, I'll skip this uh, for, for sake of time. And um, this is an interesting overview. You can, you can find it in the documentation. Um, and this, this tells you what kind of specifications you get for each performance tier of Power BI Premium. And on the left, you see the, you have uh, the EM and the P um, that they sort of yeah uh, follow each other. Uh, the, you, you can grow from an EM up until uh, EM1 to P3. And um, the same specifications apply to the A1 up until the A6 uh, capacity. Um, there are capacities even larger, but I think you have to contact your Microsoft sales representative to, uh, to purchase those. And they just go on and double the, the numbers, if I'm correct. Um, important to know that you have, for instance, for the P1, a maximum um, memory of 25 gigabytes. And um, uh, yeah, the, the other numbers uh, for the DQ and LC, that's the direct query or live connections, that's not a hard limit. Please understand that. There's 30 for the P1. That's and um, it's not a, not a hard limit. Um, yeah, let's continue. Some notes in between. Uh, like I said, distribution to free users has to be via apps. And um, collaboration on the workspaces still requires a pro license. So the free option, free users option is only for the readers when they use an app. Um, and like I said, you can Azure, use Azure Power BI Embedded. Um, but there is no sharing to free users. I talked about the XML endpoint. If you want to know where the URL is, you go to the settings of your workspace. It has to be a V2 workspace, and then you can find the uh, link there. Hi, hey Dave. Um, if, I, if I can add one thing to the, the free users. Yeah. Um, since a few months, uh, you can also use the viewer role in the workspace to, uh, to leverage free users, uh, to have them read access to the workspace. Oh yeah, that's right. So the workspace has to be in premium capacity, and then um, if you uh, give a user the the viewer role, then they also have access to that workspace with a with a free license. With a free license, okay. Yeah, cool. yeah, that's right. I uh, thanks for the clarification. That's yeah. that's really Hello. something a lot of people use. So um, I'll add that to the slide uh, for next time I use it. Yeah, and we also use the apps uh, mostly, but it, it is possible to do it uh, this way. Yeah, yeah, I think we can talk an whole hour. Uh, about the pros and cons of um, the viewer role and when you should use it and when not, but yeah, that, um, that's not for now. Okay, uh, other questions? No, not uh, not uh, right now. So um, a little bit about what's happening under the hood. I really like this. Uh, it opened up my eyes when I when I heard about this a couple of years ago, and it is really interesting and it helps you um, to understand the problems that might um, that you might have with your premium capacity and maybe performance issues or, yeah, that you, that you question yourself, what, why is this going on like this? And then, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, really good to understand what's happening on root. Um, so all the operations that happen on your premium capacity uh, are classified as either interactive or background. That's good. To interactive operations are a rendering request and responding to user interactions. So it's sort of the front end 
when a user is navigating and clicking, <clears throat> um, that's the interactive part. Background operations are primarily data flow and data set refreshes, and also maybe some dashboard tile cache updates. So they don't typically involve a user waiting on this operation, uh, staring at the monitor. Um, then another thing to know uh, related to what is happening under the hood is that um, querying uh, a model with a live connection or a direct query is generally CPU intensive. Um, when you um, uh, query a model that is in the cache uh, of the premium capacity, it's generally memory intensive. Um, Then you can also, um, yeah, so first thing, um, it's important to know that you can overcommit the capacity. W what do I mean with that is um, each capacity gives you up to 100 terabyte storage. You can just upload, 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 upload all your data flows and data uh, sets, and they will be stored in the, in the, in the background in, in, in a, on a disk um, in, in Azure storage up until 100 terabyte. That's a lot of data. I, I heard some Microsoft folks tell, tell me that nobody has ever reached that limit. Um, but then um, they are not all loaded into memory. So um, your memory for a P1 instance, like, like we saw, is 25 gigabytes. So that's it's way smaller than the 100 terabytes. So you're actually overcommitting the, the memory of the capacity. Um, um, so uh, imported models are loaded into and removed from the memory according to usage. Um, so when a user is querying a model, primarily because they open up the report or dashboard, the model is loaded into memory, or when it, of course, was already in memory, it doesn't have to do that. Um, when um, the memory is already full, and usually it's quite full because it, it just leaves the models in there, then um, it will offload the data set from the memory. That's called an eviction. But it's really important to know that um, a data set eviction is normal and expected behavior. There's nothing wrong when, you're, when your capacity is evicting a lot of data sets. So please, please know that. I'll go back to this slide. Um, yeah, probably I will we'll first try to uh, detect the models that have become inactive because they, yeah, they are. Um, they, they can be offloaded without any problem, without anybody noticing. Um, then if there are no inactive models to infect, um, probably I will, will do the uh, background operations. Uh, um, it, will, it will select data sets that have a background operation. Um, I'll, I'll explain it with, um, with, with some good slides later. And as a last resort, after 30 seconds of field attempts, um, your end user will get the respond, uh, the message that, that it's not possible, that it's just an error. Uh, there's too much going on on the capacity and um, yeah, it, it, it failed to load the data set to the, to the memory. I'll skip this. So, um, little story. Um, imagine that you have a P1 capacity, it has 25 gigabytes of memory and it has 100 terabyte of storage. So imagine there are a lot of data sets uh, in this, um, in this uh, capacity. And we want to, uh, so user starts exploring the reports, then um, they are loaded into memory. So one, two, and three are in memory. Temperature, so to speak, of this uh, premium capacity is, is still cool. Nothing, nothing, nothing to worry about. What happens when the capacity is out of resources? So with that, we mean memory. 
Uh, for instance, uh, data set one to six are already, already loaded and a user requests something from data set seven, it, will be, uh, it needs to be loaded into memory, but it's, it's kind of full. Well, then it selects one or two data sets that are inactive and it just swaps the data sets. It, uh, it's got, it, it has some work to do, but it's still warm. Um, and please, please also know that this is all happening without you have to know and worry about this. And um, if you compare this, this whole exercise of, of model eviction and model management, uh, know that this is this is beautiful. This is great. And uh, for instance, um, Azure Analysis Services or on-prem SQL Server Analysis Service does not have that. If you have um, a couple of mem uh, uh, models in your memory in a tool, you have to do your work yourself. Maybe you can script and automate it, but um, yeah, it can become quite complicated. So going back to the Power BI story, uh, the server has to do work, but it's still uh, warm. Um, then um, uh, let's talk about the uh, data set refreshes. So um, if there is a, um, um, a memory pressure, so the memory is full, it's still working on all the data set refreshes, there can be a queue of uh, data, set, um, data sets that need to be refreshed. And that's no, there's no problem at all because Usually, uh, this happens like on a scheduled basis. If it's a, a couple of seconds or minutes later than than the scheduled time, that that's that's no uh, nothing to worry about. Even you will not notice it, and you can also not depend on the data sets to be scheduled at, at exactly that time anyway. So um, yeah, please understand that this uh, might happen. And when there's um, a memory available, it will it will start the refresh. Um, this, this also happens uh, just out of the box and in the, in the back end, and the temperature of the server will be still just normal warm. Then what if my capacity is heavily used? It can get complicated. So this, if you if you are an admin of your of a capacity, this is the interesting part where you, yeah, should be uh, on the lookout for. Um, we have both the background and the interactive operations. What happens if data set seven needs to be loaded into memory? We'll stop the refresh of one of the data sets and it will be put to the queue. And when there's time, it will do it again. This is like stopping that refresh. That's of course not something that you want to happen very often. So we're kind of running hot here. But what if there are only interactive operations happening so um, all the data sets are being used actively by users and we want to load data set seven, but there's no room, then it, yeah, it, it cannot do that. So that's the case, what I, what I described, when um, the user will have uh, the notification that um, something is, is, is not going as expected. And now you can see your, your capacity is burning. Any questions on, on this? Feel free to unmute yourself. I believe there are some questions in the chat at this moment. Oh, there is a link shared by uh, Nikki, sorry. Yeah, okay. So then something about um, general Power BI premium management. Um, like I said, I want to repeat that here. Um, management capacity, um, yeah, it's also about permissions and you have capacity admins and then a certain people that have um, assignment permissions. Um, the capacity admin is, yeah, for like like you expect, it's it's a it's a uh, role with uh, a lot of uh, permissions, uh, and then you need to be careful who you make the uh, admin of your your capacity. Um, don't don't add too too many uh, administrators. The the amount of times when you really have to go to the uh, capacity settings and change something there is not not very often, um, but these people they also uh, are the ones that can monitor the capacity. So yeah, um, unless you do something special, 
um, only capacity admins can can see what's going on in the yeah under the hood of the of the capacity. Um, then uh, talking about monitoring, you have a couple of options. Um, so ever since the beginning, there, there was an, a page in in the Power BI admin portal where you can see um, a summary of, of a usage. Um, and it has been updated uh, to be more useful in, in, the, in the past. I think the next slide talks about it. Yeah. So this is what, I, what I'm talking about. It, it is quite useful, if, and especially if, it, if it's not, um, if, there's, if the capacity is not burning, then this just gives you, yeah, some kind of overview. And you can see, oh, nothing to worry about. It's all going fine. CPU, memory, it's not utilized 100%. Um, we have some some spare room, but then the second option. So what, what, what um, if you really want to go into to the details, you cannot see it on the, on that health metrics overview, and you have to open up the Power BI Premium Capacity Metrics app. It's a mouthful. Power BI Premium Capacity Metrics app. It's a template app that Microsoft develops, and they distribute it via the App Source portal. And if you're a premium admin, premium capacity admin, then you can um, yeah, install it. And this gives you a whole uh, yeah, um, a, a bunch of, of, of metrics. Here is an example of that. Um, so you get, a, you get an, an overview, but also really um, detailed um, information. Um, it's important to, to understand that it is uh, data that is uh, the maximum of seven days old. So Microsoft not does not give you any information that, that's older than that. So if you want to compare week over week, month over month, uh, you have to yeah keep track yourself. Um, since the Power BI Premium XMLA endpoint um, be became available, I don't know if the write capability was also necessary, but let's say currently you can use the XMLA endpoint um, to connect to the data set that's behind these graphs. And then you can um, uh, query the data set and um, perhaps store the query, query results uh, yeah, anywhere you want. So you can. Um, build up your own history of those metrics. It, um, if I might interrupt you shortly, there is a way to do it uh, differently today in today's setup. Oh. Uh, you can uh, publish the template app to a workspace and you can build your own report on top of the uh, by Microsoft provided data set directly. And then does it, does it give you the option to load a, a longer period of data? No, it doesn't give you the option to load a longer period, but at least you can set up a bit more useful report for your purpose other than the default template app. Yeah, all right. That, that's a great, great option. Um, what What is uh, interesting to know here, um, I don't know if I have it on the slides, um, but Microsoft has published a really thorough uh, white paper on premium capacity management and monitoring. So if you if you are a capacity admin, at least once read through that uh, white paper. Um, if it's on the on the slides, um, somebody will put it in the chat for sure. Um, yeah, a couple of uh, uh, last uh, tips that I want to uh, share. Um, in, in reality, um, you can buy uh, multiple capacities. Um, so you can, you can buy um, two or more P1s, and you can, you can uh, extend them and add them, um, aggregate them, uh, so they become, in reality, a, a P2 uh, size capacity. Uh, but it's maybe more wise to separate them, keep them separated, and um, um, put the more business critical uh, reports on the uh, on one of the capacities, and like the rest on um, 
on the, on the, on the other capacity. Uh, you can also decide to to have a, a certain portion of of that rest, like maybe the self service part of your Power BI service on shared capacity. But um, um, I can imagine that, that that certain features of premium will also be um, yeah uh, great to be leveraged by the self service community in your organization. So um, if you can have a couple of of premium capacities and um, yeah, separate their their usage and goal. That that's um, that that's a really great uh, valuable tip. Um, don't forget you can use Power BI Embedded, like I demonstrated. It's available in Azure um, to try out and experiment what you can do with Power BI Premium. Um, it is also allowed to use it as um, as a production environment, uh, but but do know that you cannot share it with users without a pro license. Then something about optimizations. Um, like, like we learned, um, there is a limit to your capacity. You pay for, you pay, you pay a certain amount of money and then you get certain specifications. Um, whenever you have um, a problem with your uh, with your with a report, and you you think, well, it might be my my capacity that's that that's um, uh, be, that 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 is the problem. Um, try if you can switch the report to a uh, workspace that is only uh, in shared capacity, and see if that that fixes the problem. Um, and also, um, yeah, please know that every percentage of data set or data model. Um, that the sizing that you that you reduce is immediately uh, a benefit um, for 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 the whole capacity. So imagine that you have a yeah um, just me muting somebody. Um, imagine that you have uh, um, four really large data sets in your in your capacity, and and then they sum up to maybe twenty gigabytes. Your capacity is like full. So um, what if you uh, optimize them by reducing them 50% in size? Then it only takes 10 gigabytes of memory. And then you can, you can load more data sets or, or your, your, your problem is then, is then solved. So please always, as a first resort, check the models and if you can optimize them. Um, and then as a last tip, uh, if you have any problems, try to prevent overlapping data flow or data set refresh windows. Like we, like we saw in the diagram in, in, in animations, they, um, um, they all have to share the, the memory. So if you can, and you, you prevent the overlap, so you schedule one uh, at, at 1, 1 a.m. and the other at 2 a.m. and the other at 3 a.m., they, they will have enough memory to do their thing and they, they will never run into uh, refresh issues. Um, and also, yeah, if you have data sets or data flows that are scheduled to refresh on a, like on the, the business hours and they don't need to be refreshed at, the, at those times, try to reschedule them and, and yeah, get yourself a, a report that, that gives you the overview of all those uh, schedules so you can you can check that and monitor monitor that over time because maybe the next day your business user changes the, the 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 schedule again so you um you want to keep an eye on that all right um the white paper that i uh, mentioned is uh, posted in the chat by nikki thank you very much um yeah so this was my session um ways to communicate with me i have a blog moderndata.ai and um uh, if you want you can uh, download the uh, the cheat sheet um Thanks for your attention. If, if there are any questions, uh, feel free to uh, ask them. Thanks, Dave. So far, I don't see any questions coming in. If somebody has a question, also feel free to unmute yourself now. Don't be, sh don't be shy. Nope, nothing so far. All right. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, sure.
you're uh, more than welcome. So if, if anybody still has a question, uh, as Dave said, there's always a way to reach out to him uh, and uh, ask your question. Um, I think uh, that's it. Uh, thanks all for joining and thanks Dave for presenting and also David, if you're still on the call, thanks uh, also for presenting. Um, it was an honor to have you both uh, in our user group. So, um, Nikki, please, uh, uh, I think you know it better than I do. What is our next meetup? When is it planned? Um, that's a good question, I believe. Um, in the second week of September, um, out of my head, it's September 14, but we don't have uh, an event planned uh, right now. So we're just, um, um, it's, it's softly uh, scheduled, I, I would say. Yeah, we're finalizing the last thing. So keep an eye out on the website. Uh, as soon as we have everything ready, we will share it there uh, for our next meetup. And of course, uh, also on Twitter and, uh, and LinkedIn. Um, yeah, if there are still no questions, I think we uh, uh, it's time to, to close this, uh, this call for today. Thank you for uh, organizing. This is David here. <laughs> Thank you for hey. organizing and inviting me. Sure, you're welcome. Great. Thanks all ah. for joining again. And uh, uh, anything to add, Nikki? Um, yeah, I, I just saw uh, Rishi um, in the chat. Um, he was happy to present the session at some point. So uh, maybe we'll contact him uh, to see. Yep. <laughs> Let's do that. Always good. When will the uh, recording be available and where? <laughs> the most difficult question you can ask, Dave. <laughs> just say no. before the weekend on YouTube. Uh, that would be a challenge, I guess, but we can uh, see what we can do. It's it's going live before any weekend. That's that's true, but um, <laughs> we'll do it as soon as possible. Uh, that's that's okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> now we will also share on uh, Twitter if the recordings are live because we have uh, still a bunch of other recordings to slightly modify and upload. But anyhow, it's uh, good that you uh, took our attention for that because that's uh, a little bit lacking behind. Yeah, true. Um, okay. And one thing um, uh, I mentioned in the first, before the first session, um, in in October, uh, October eight, um, there's um, uh, a meter planned, um, and that is uh, already finalized. So we have a newcomer uh, speaker, uh, Ron Verhoeven, that is uh, going to talk about optimizing Power BI data models. Um, so that's already uh, at uh, available in uh, at the powerbidays.com. You can register there uh, already. Yep. Okay. okay. Thanks uh, all, and uh, see you next time.